Shalom, Most High Christ bless Israel. Um, today, we're back with 15 Minutes with the Captains. My name's Captain Nationnel. Today, we are going to go into Nicanor. Um, Nicanor is one of the, the, the feasts we keep. Um, and we're going to give you some understanding today about what Nicanor is about. So what we're going to do, first of all, is we're just going to give a quick summary, um, just so you can, you know, not get lost in this. Just a summary to give you some understanding of what Nicanor is about. Okay, so, so Nicanor, the son of Patroclus, um, you can read about that in 2 Maccabees 8 and 9. He was a Syrian Seleucid under the King Antiochus and Demetrius Soter. Now, the story of Nicanor, when you research it, took place during the Seleucid harmonian periods probably around let's say it could be like 190 to 161 bc now during the hellenistic period under the Ptolemies, um the jews were given some privileges although we were in captivity we were given some privileges but the seleucid rulers were hell-bent on, uh, on forcing they were hell-bent on forcing hellenism hellenism on us you understand. So um, there was some privilege under, under the Ptolemies, but the Seleucid rulers were hell-bent on forcing Hellenism on us. Now, during this time period, there was a wicked Israelite named Alchemus. Now, he wanted to be the HNIC, as they say, which back then was the high priest over Israel. So what he did was he went to King Demetrius and he made some very wicked allegations against Judas Maccabees and his men. Basically, he wanted them put to death, and he wanted the high seat. So, as a result, King Demetrius appointed Nicanor, who at the time, Nicanor was the governor of Cyprus. You can read about that in 2 Maccabees 12 and 2, I think it is. Now, and he was very well known to hate Jews. He hated Jews with a passion. So. King Demetrius picked, handpicked Nicanor to handle this business of killing Judas Maccabees and his men. So that's just a brief summary. Um, you know, when you look at the um, when you look at the picture that we've we've put up on the on the screen, you it gives you kind of like a timeline. You can see it's mainly from like Malachi to Christ, but you can see um, in the middle of the page, you can see um, there was the rule of the Platonomies of Egypt, you can see, then it goes down. That, that period specifically is talking about Hellenistic period between 330 to 166 BC. Um, then you can see under that, the rule of the Seleucids of Syria. You understand? So this is where you read about King Demetrius. Um, it's got the time periods there. You could say from maybe 190 BC to, to 165 BC, 161 BC. And underneath that, you see the Harmonian dynasty as well. So um, you could say the, the Seleucids, um, which the Seleucids, which um, Demetrius was and Nicanor was under, it was kind of like a crossover between the Hellenistic and the Harmonian periods. You understand? But like, like I mentioned earlier, when um, Nicanor was governor, he had a very very strong very strong hatred for the um for the jews and he basically when you re research it and you read it, read about it he was hell bent you know on extreme cruelty um oppressing oppressing our people and um forcing forcing hellenism on us you understand so all right so let's get into it now let's get into it we're going to start reading from um first maccabees um chapter Seven. We're going to read that. The book. So, so read verse one. The book of First Maccabees, chapter seven and verse one. In the hundred and one and fiftieth year, Demetrius, the son of Seleucus, departed from Rome and came up with a few men unto a city of the sea coast and reigned there. So it talks about in the hundred and fifty fifty first year, Seleucus. Uh, sorry, Demetrius the son of Seleucus departed from Rome and came up with a few men, city of the coast and there. Okay, let's jump to verse five. Verse five. There came unto him all the wicked and ungodly men of Israel 
have been Alcimus, who was desirous to be high priest for their captain. So we mentioned that earlier. So when Demetrius was in power, you had the wicked of our people that were coming to him. Um, ungodly men, it says here, ungodly men of Israel, having Alchemus, who wanted to be high priest for their captain. So he was trying to score brownie points, if you want to call it that, with, with King Demetrius. And he wanted to be the high priest of Israel. Read on. And they accused the people to the king, saying, Judas and his brethren have slain all thy friends and driven us out of our own land. So he wanted to sow a seed in the king's mind to say, Judas and his brethren have slain everyone and have driven us out. Read on. Now therefore, send some man whom thou trustest, and let him go and see what havoc he hath made among us and in the king's land, and let him punish them with all them that aid them. Mm -hmm. Then the king chose Barsidus, a friend of the king, who ruled beyond the flood, ruled beyond the flood, the flood, and was a great man in the kingdom and faithful to the king. And him he sent with the wicked alchemist, whom he made high priest, and commanded that he should take vengeance of the children of Israel. So he chose Bacchidus, and he sent him, along with alchemist, to go into Israel and take vengeance. Read on. So they departed, and came with a great power into the land of Judea, where they sent messengers to Judas and his brethren, with peaceable words deceitfully. So th that's how these heathens were moving, with peaceable words deceitfully. You can read about that in Psalms 55 and 21. It was always prophesied from the beginning, that's how they were moving. In fact, get that real quick. Let's read it real quick. So it says, they sent messenger messages to Judas and his virgin with peaceable words deceitfully. So read 55, 21 Psalms. The book of Psalms, chapter 55 and verse 21. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. So were they drawn swords? Very deceitful words. They've always been that way. Now let's go back and let's continue from verse 11. Let's see what happened after they spoke peaceful words. First Maccabees, chapter 7 and verse 11. But they gave no heed to their words, for they saw that they were come with a great power. Then did they assemble unto Alchemist and Barsidus, a company of scribes, to acquire justice. Now, the Assidians were the first among the children of Israel that sought peace of them. So the Assidians, mighty men, went and sought peace with, um, with, with, with these heathens. Went and sought peace with Bacchidus and with Alchemist. Read on. For said they, one that is a priest of the seed of Aaron is come with this army, and he will do us no wrong. So they saw Alchemist and they thought, he's from the seed of Aaron. So because he's with them, nothing bad is going to happen. Let's read on. So he spake unto them peaceably and swear unto them, saying, We will procure the harm neither of you nor your friends. Whereupon they believed him, howbeit. He took of them three score men and slew them in one day. So they took 60 men and slew them in one day after speaking peaceable words. Read on. According to the words which he wrote, The flesh of thy saints have they cast out, and their blood have they shed round about Jerusalem, and there was none to bury them. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, the fear and dread of them fell upon all the people who said, There is neither truth nor righteousness in them, for they have broken the covenant and oath that they made. So our people recognize that these people that have come peaceably, these heathens that have come peaceably, they have broken now the covenant which they made when they came. You know. After this, remove Barsidus from Jerusalem and pitch his tents in Bezeph where he sent and took many of the men that had forsaken him, and certain of the people also. And when he had slain them, he cast them into, a, into the great pit. So you can see it was a bloodshed. He was going around killing our people. And he mentioned cast them into a great pit. You know? Verse 20. Then committed he the country to Alcimus, and left with him a power to aid him. So Barsidus went to the king. So Alchemist got what he desired. Now, he was put in a position of authority um, and he was left there with some able men 
to support him. Are you done? But Alchemist contended for the high priesthood. But he contended. He wanted the high priest. So though he was given a position of authority, he said, I want the high priesthood. Are you done? And unto him resorted all such as troubled the people who, after they had gotten the land of Judah into their power, did much hurt in Israel. Mm -hmm. Now, when Judah saw all the mischief that Alchemist and his company had done among the Israelites, even above the heathen, he went out into all the coasts of Judea round about and took vengeance of them that had revolted from him, so that they durst no more go forth into the country. So Judas, you can read about him in the chapters prior to this, was a warrior. He was a warrior. Definitely a, an example and, you know, a pillar in in the community at this time so when he saw what had happened he stood up he stood up read that verse again verse 24 he went out into all the coasts of judea round about and took vengeance of them that had revolted from him so that they durst no more go forth into the country so all of the people that had took that went against him he went for vengeance that's how he moved read on on the other side, when Alchemist saw that Judas and his company had gotten the upper hand and knew that he was not able to abide their force, he went again to the king and said all the worst of them that he could. Mm -hmm. Then the king sent Nicanor, one of his honorable princes. So when the king realized that, mm, you know, we have a problem here with these Maccabees, he said then, I'm going to send Nicanor. One of his honourable princes. Keep going. A man that bared deadly hate unto Israel with commandment to destroy the people. So, so he had a deadly, deadly hate. Remember, he was coming from the solution period. You understand? So his, his hatred was very strong towards Israel. He was about stopping Israel from following laws, making sure Israel acclimatized, integrate into um, Greek culture. He was against anything righteous that we were doing. That was his mindset. Read on. So, Nicanor came to Jerusalem with a great force and sent unto Judas and his brethren deceitfully with friendly words, saying, Let there be no battle between me and you. I will come with a few men that I may see you in peace. He came therefore to Judas and they saluted one another peaceably. So you read in here how with the hatred he had, he still came with smooth words. So that be a lesson or a, a wake up, a light bulb moment for all of you listening. Because we read about his strong hatred. But at the same time, he still came with smooth and peaceable words. Read on. How be it? The enemies were prepared to take away Judas by violence. So they were prepared to take Judas by violence. Nothing was going to stop them. Keep going. Which thing after it was known to Judas, to wit, that he came unto him with deceit. He was so afraid of him and would see his face no more. So the deceit was so good that Judas actually believed him. But when he found out, he was like, I need to get away from this guy. You don't. Nicanor also, when he saw that his counsel was discovered, went out to fight against Judas beside Kafir Shal Salama. So when Nicanor realized his cover was blown, he thought, okay, time to go and fight. Read on. Where there were slain of Nicanor's side about 5,000 men, and the rest fled into the city of David. So Judas and his people, his men, slain around 5,000 men, and the rest fled. Keep going. After this, went Nicanor up to Mount Sion, and there came out of the sanctuary certain of the priests and certain of the elders of the people to salute him peaceably and to shew him the burnt sacrifice that was offered for the king. But he mocked them and laughed at them and abused them shamefully and spake proudly. So you can see here the hatred he has for our people. He had that strong hatred. Even when they, our people came, the priests came to, to greet him peaceably, he mocked, laughed and cursed us out. You don't. And swear in his wrath, saying, Unless Judas and his host be now delivered into mine hands, if ever I come again in safety, I will burn up this house. And with that, he went out in a great rage. So he left with a threat. Bring Judas to me, or this house is going to get burnt. This temple is going to get burnt up. 
you know. Then the priest entered in and stood before the altar and the temple, weeping and saying, Thou, O Lord, didst choose this house to be called by thy name and to be a house of prayer and petition for thy people. Be avenged of this man and his host and let them fall by the sword. Remember their blasphemies and suffer them not to continue any longer. So Nicanor went out of Jerusalem and pitched his tent in Beth Horon, where an host out of Syria met him. So his host, his people from Syria came out and met him to join with him. Keep them. But Judas pitched in Adassa with 3,000 men. And there he prayed, saying, O Lord, when they that were sent from the king of the Assyrians blasphemed thine angel, went out and smote an hundred fourscore and five thousand of them. Even so destroy thou this host before us this day, that the rest may know that he hath spoken blasphemously against thy sanctuary, and judge thou him according to his wickedness. You see, so we're seeing the prayer that Judas made, and it shows the power of prayer. The Lord does hear righteous prayers. Read on. So, the thirteenth day of the month Adar, the host joined battle. But Nicanor's host was discomfited, and he himself was first slain in the battle. Now, oh, Nicanor, the Lord <laughs> killed Nicanor first. He was slain first in the battle. Normally, someone of his stature would kind of fall back and let the men go forward. But the Lord allowed him to get slain first. Read on. Verse 44. Now, when Nicanor's host saw that he was slain, they cast away their weapons and fled. Then they pursued after them a day's journey from Adassa unto Gazaria, sounding an alarm after them with their trumpets. So when they saw Nicolau was slain, his people fled. They ran. Keep going, you know. Whereupon they came forth out of all the towns of Judea round about and closed them in, so that they, turning back upon them that pursued them, were all slain with the sword, and not one of them was left. So, read that verse again. Verse 46. Whereupon they came forth out of all the towns of Judea round about, and closed them in, so that they, turning back upon them, that pursued them, were all slain with the sword, and not one of them was left. So we hemmed them in, and we killed them all. Not one was left. Keep going. Afterwards, they took the spoils, and the, and the prey, and smote of Nicanor's head, and his right hand, which he stretched out so proudly, and brought them away, and hanged them up toward Jerusalem. That's gruesome. Read that verse again. Afterwards, they took the spoils and the prey. So they took all of their goods, riches, keep going. And smote off Nicanor's head, and his right hand. So they took off Nicanor's head, they cut off his head, and his right hand. Keep going. Which he stretched out so proudly, and brought them away, and hanged them up toward Jerusalem. So you can see these Maccabees weren't to be played with. They weren't to be played with, you know. They were ruthless and they were, they were serious in business. You understand? Read on. So this caused the people rejoice greatly. And they kept that day a day of great gladness. Like we keep today. We, whenever it comes down around to the time of Nicanor, we keep the day with gladness. Because we read the scriptures, we read the account of what happened. And we're happy when we read this. Read on. Moreover, they ordained to keep yearly this day, being the 13th of Adar. Thus the land of Judah was in rest a little while. So they ordained to keep this day yearly, the 13th of Adar. Thus the land of Judah was in rest a little while. So this is pretty much a summary, you know, to get a full understanding of Nicanor and to get the history, you know, of the Maccabees. Obviously, you have to start from Maccabees chapter one and read through. One of the best books I enjoy in the Bible, you know, it's it's very gruesome um, and it shows how our forefathers were warriors, you know, they about the Lord's business. They were no, there was no fear in them. They weren't scared to do what they had to do for the Lord. So today we keep the feast of Nicanor, we keep the day of Nicanor. And what we do is we, we, we obviously have to consider, let me just say this. Nicanor is not a Sabbath, just so you know. It's not a Sabbath, and we keep it for a memorial. We do, you know, we remember the day um, with gladness, but it's not a Sabbath. So 
with it not being a Sabbath, it means you can buy, sell, cook, and work. Am I correct? That's it. Buy, sell, cook, and work. Unless, 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 unless it falls on a normal Sabbath, which is a Friday sundown to Saturday sundown, where that obviously supersedes everything. But outside of that, it's a normal day. We just keep in with gladness. We enjoy it. We, 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 we eat, drink, laugh, dance, and we, you know, remember what took place. So, uh, Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. 